Now, our next guest is helping us unravel the mysteries of the thyroid. In particular, we're talking about the most common problem in underactive thyroid when the gland doesn't make enough thyroid hormone. We are joined by researcher and health expert, Dr. Francis Pitsilis. Welcome back, Francis. Morning, Mel. Now, the thyroid, what exactly is it and what does it do? Right, the thyroid is a butterfly-shaped gland at the front of your throat that basically is our thermostat. It helps our body's energy to stay at the right level so that all the biochemistry and the metabolic processes work properly. Okay, so where is it sitting? Somewhere like in here? About here. Just through, oh, is it quite big, through there? Yeah, can, yeah. I've often I mean, wondered. You don't want it to be too big because then you worry about it. So what, what is most likely, who, or who rather is most likely to develop an underactive thyroid? It's more common in women it runs in families, and in particular, it can run in families where there's a lot of a certain lot of autoimmune diseases like celiac disease, diabetes type one, and rheumatoid arthritis. Um, and it's more common in women after the menopause as okay. well. But other people mm. can get it too. Men can yes, men as can well. as well. So, what would the symptoms be? What would we see if our thyroid was underactive? Well, it's a bit of a chameleon because it's underdiagnosed in my opinion and it can present from all sorts of things like not sleeping well, diabetes, anxiety, dementia even. It, it is one of the reversible causes of dementia. Shoulder pain, aches and pains, so a percentage of fibromyalgia patients might have an underactive thyroid. Uh, fluid retention, especially in the hands, feet and face higher blood sugar, diabetes, chronic fatigue. Pretty much everything. Well, it can be heavy periods. It can be part of, and the contraceptive pill and oral HRT slow it down. Wow. So how do you actually diagnose it then if you think you might have a problem? What do you do? Well, the, the blood tests are not very reliable because um, the local laboratory, for example, tells us that their variance, their flexibility on a, on a test is 40%, which makes it a bit dodgy. The TSH blood test that doctors use can be made to look better by chronic stress or zinc deficiency. So oh we're goodness. not always on a very firm grounding when we're trying to use blood tests. So we have to revert to the old saying, listen to the patient and look at the patient mm -hmm. because thyroid was originally a clinical diagnosis. So what then can we do to improve the, the health mm. of our thyroid mm. just in our everyday life? So if the patient is suspicious, they could do a, an online thyroid questionnaire and ask their GP for a potential treatment. And from the natural point of view, you need to correct your zinc deficiency, which is the most important mineral for thyroid. Mm -hmm. And you can do that by doing the zinc taste test in the shops or ask your family doctor for a test. Um, you can look at your iodine levels. The, the soil is deficient in iodine. So if you haven't got blood pressure, use iodized salt. Um, you can look at your iron levels because a lot of women are actually low in iron and the thyroid needs mm. iron. Wow. So okay. there's a lot of minerals that you need to be aware of. A lot of things that we need to look yeah. at. Well that has um, been some very good advice today. Thank you so much. Uh, if you would like more, go to Francis's website for more information about your thyroid and plenty of other health issues as well.